You know, when an automaker manages to rack up over 28,000 engine failures before landing on a solution, you can't help but sit back and say, how did it get this far? That's exactly what happened with GM and their 6.2 liter V8. After tens of thousands of failures, the solution? Switch to thicker motor oil. Sounds simple, but trust me, this is a rabbit hole worth going down. Let's break this down and really understand what's going on here. First, let's talk about how bad the situation really is. GM had to recall nearly 600,000 vehicles after not one, not two, but four investigations. That's right, four investigations just to start understanding the problem. And those investigations didn't exactly inspire confidence. GM identified over 28,000 complaints or incidents tied to failures of their L87 engine. We're talking crankshaft issues, connecting rods, engine bearing failures, catastrophic stuff. Out of those, more than 14,000 vehicles lost all propulsion entirely. And just in case you're wondering, yes, these are vehicles proudly wearing badges like Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra. All right, let's stay focused. So what's causing these failures? It boils down to two main issues, sediment damaging the rod bearings and crankshaft oil galleries and crankshaft dimensions or surface finish being out of spec. In simple terms, parts that should work in harmony are grinding each other down because they weren't made right. Manufacturing mistakes, plain and simple. So much for America's most dependable full-size pickup, right? It's funny because the Silverado was marketing itself as the most dependable, yet Consumer Reports ranks it near the bottom for powertrain reliability. JD Power, meanwhile, seems to think it's great, though they themselves admit their rankings aren't necessarily based on statistical significance. When that's in the fine print, you really have to wonder what the awards mean. Now, here's where things get really interesting. GM's solution depends on how bad your particular engine is. If your engine's already chewing itself apart, they'll replace it. But if it passes inspection, meaning the crankshaft and camshaft are still in sync, they'll just swap your oil from 0W20 to 0W40. That's a pretty big jump in viscosity. But how is thicker oil supposed to save an engine that wasn't built right to begin with? This brings us to some engineering fundamentals, specifically the Strybeck curve. Picture this curve as the map of how friction behaves between two moving parts separated by a lubricant. On the far left of this curve, you've got what's called boundary lubrication. That's where there's so little oil between the parts that they're basically scraping together, tons of friction, lots of wear. Next, you move into mixed lubrication, where there's some oil separating the parts, but not enough to eliminate metal-to-metal -metal contact entirely. And finally, on the far right, you have hydrodynamic lubrication. That's the sweet spot. A full, consistent film of oil separates the parts, reducing friction and wear to a minimum. Where you sit on this curve depends on three things. How fast the parts are moving, how thick the oil is, and how much load is being placed on the parts. Faster speeds or thicker oil push you to the right, towards safer territory with full oil film separation. Lower loads do the same. Thinner oil, slower speeds, higher loads. They push you left into the danger zone of metal on metal contact. Now here's the thing. If your crankshaft and connecting rod are made correctly, your engine lives in that hydrodynamic lubrication zone most of the time. The oil keeps everything safe, even if it's relatively thin like 0W20. But if you've got rough surfaces or bad tolerances, suddenly you're spending more time in the mixed or boundary zones. The metal is scraping and parts start wearing out. So GM's solution, thicker oil, is trying to shove the engine's operating conditions to the right on that curve, away from trouble. Thicker oil makes up for the manufacturing flaws, at least to some extent. But that raises another question. If thicker oil helps, why don't we all just use thicker oil all the time? The answer is efficiency. Thicker oil increases friction when you don't need the extra protection which saps power and fuel economy. That's why modern engines use thinner oils, because when everything is made right, thinner oil keeps friction low without compromising reliability. Push too far to the right on that curve, and all you're doing is burning more fuel and generating unnecessary heat without gaining anything in terms of durability. 
Now, there's a lot of confusion about changing oil grades. People worry about whether switching viscosities will help or hurt their engines. Let's clear that up. Imagine your engine calls for 5W30. Jumping to 10W30 means your oil is thicker when cold. That could slow oil flow during startup, which isn't great. Dropping to 5W20 means the oil is thinner at high temps. That could be risky because it may not provide enough protection under load. But if you go from 5W30 to 0W30 or from 5W30 to 5W40, you're not introducing your engine to a viscosity it's never seen before. The oil's behavior at any given temperature stays within the range your engine was designed for. So what about GM's move from 0W20 to 0W40? It's a calculated choice. They know these flawed engines need more help to stay in that hydrodynamic zone, and thicker oil is a simple way to get it. But here's the kicker. For engines that are replaced, GM goes right back to recommending 0W20. Why? Because when the manufacturing is done correctly, they know 0W20 is fine. If they really thought 0W20 was to blame, they'd switch to 0W40 across the board, pay a small fuel economy penalty, and avoid the massive cost of future engine replacements. But they don't. That tells you everything you need to know. This wasn't an oil problem. It was a manufacturing problem. There's also this myth that automakers choose thin oils only to hit fuel economy targets, and that reliability takes a backseat. Let's think that through. Say switching from 0W20 to 0W40 costs 2% in fuel economy. For a truck that gets 20 miles per gallon, that's a drop to 19.6. The penalty from NHTSA, about $60 per vehicle. Meanwhile, replacing an engine costs thousands. If GM thought 0W20 would destroy their new engines, they'd happily take the fuel economy hit and use thicker oil. But they don't, because they're confident the engines will last with the recommended oil. Now, is there any situation where thicker oil makes sense for you as an owner? Sure. Track days, heavy towing, high heat conditions, situations where the engine is working harder and oil temperatures climb. In those cases, a thicker oil can help keep you in the safe zone of the Strybeck curve. But for everyday driving, if your engine was designed for a certain oil, you're usually best sticking with it. What's fascinating is that studies on this subject go in every direction. Some show more wear with thinner oil. Some show no difference. Some even show no real fuel economy gain from going thinner. But look at what automakers themselves have found. Honda, way back in 1999, tested 0W20 oil and saw nowhere issues compared to 5W30 with a small fuel economy bump. In 2011, they looked at even thinner oils and found no significant increase in where metals like iron or aluminum in the oil, even at reduced viscosities. And Toyota, in 2020, pushed the limits further with 0W8 oil. They knew thinner oil risked more metal contact at low engine speeds, but by using additives to bolster film strength where it mattered, they kept wear in check while improving fuel economy. So what's the bottom line? Thinner oils, when matched to engines designed for them, aren't the problem. Manufacturing defects are. GM's thicker oil solution is a patch for bad machining not a condemnation of modern oil technology. The real takeaway here is simple. Use the oil grade your engine was designed for and focus on quality manufacturing. That's where reliability truly begins.